Okay, so I want to show you how I'm making this ring. I want you to notice those curly cues that come out. That that's it. That RPMs that you get this a slower RPM, and you could unwind it differently if this was metal. Now I want to show you that's the interface ring. I'm, I don't want to sacrifice all of this in one shot, this uh, bushing. But I will sacrifice it for you guys. That the interface ring now is just where his, uh, his material sits. Is the, uh, is the, let's go out here and wind it in. And maybe a bit of an angle here. Doing what I call Japanese style. That means uh, it's a little different than normal than typical. They do a lot of free, uh, free hand. And a lot of uh, don't get caught up in the small details about points, etc. So I want to show you that profile. Let me, sorry guys, I gotta, you look through the camera and also do this. Alright. Well, that's a failure. Hold on. We'll let that, since it's confined there, there's no reason to panic and move anything away and have it eject. It's locked in, so there's no reason to panic yet. So I have a goal here, it's just bear with me as I show you. I just gotta keep my leading edge just enough where it's not an issue. Just enough. Hold on. Okay, so we're getting there. I just want you guys to see what it what it looks like as I machine this freehand, and I create and I purposely create rings. I'll show you the rings in a minute. Here. All right, let's take a look. I'm gonna stop it with it in place. Normally pull away from, but I want you to see the profile, the grooves. See the grooves? My oily hands show the grooves. All right, this would be something that would be more interface for the uh, epoxies, but did they do that or was it just smooth? And then here's the inner ring that we're going to leave this ring right here, this part. And I'm going to take this out to here, and this will be the outer ring, and then I'll leave this as the inner ring. Very small. But with that said, I'm not going to sacrifice all of this just yet. I'm going to make that concept. So I'll pull this in and give you a smaller version of it. Bear with me. Take the finish edge. Now it is. Now I'll back it out. It's going to be a different torque on this, so hopefully it'll be nice to me. Purposely running that small 
with eggs like that. But I want you to see the outer ring and then the inner ring. This has no chance of biting my finger. Okay, so now you're getting the concept. Let's go in just a little bit more. And I'm doing that on purpose. I want you to see the bevel. Okay, there's the bevel, a bevel. Let's turn that off. Now it does have a chance to bite me. So let's get rid of this the acrylic cubes. And remember, this had a bevel on the outside edge as it went down. It, also, it had it up here, but I think it had one internal also. So that's the internal bevel, and then the outside bevel is, it is they tapered it off. So it looks something like that. And then in here, inner ring was flat. It didn't have any bevel, presented as no bevel right here. And so now you have a concept of what the interface ring looked like. On this side is the bolted side, which bolts here, which I won't drill that yet. I just want to get you conceptual versions as we work our way up. So let me move this out of the way. And we're starting to make our, 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 our interface ring that goes to the carbon fiber tube. I did this scale down pretty small so you can visually see it. I can put it out here and did it differently. And I still can. But right now, I want you to look at it like this so it stands out more proudly to you. Let me see if I can get some more grease and oil on there or something like that for my fingers. So it stands out more proudly. This is where the glued area was right here, including here. But this is where we see the interface ring in, a, in, a, in the, uh, the carbon fiber sample and maybe the titanium sample too, but this interface ring fails. Rips it off. It's not much. So the, so this is all carbon fiber. So during deflection, see what's happening? What, look at my thumb. During deflection, it's up here. Now it's down here. During the, uh, the failure of it. Now if you get a, a pressure, a vessel, a tube, it's always going to break non-uniformly. You, you think it should be uniform all the way around. So therefore it's a crush uniformly. That's only in the movies. It's only in fake science all right now to prove that it's only fake science you know me guys i try to i leave it open for you guys to try to call me debunk me look at your atmospheric test with the sh with the uh railroad car does that look like it crumpled everywhere evenly and it's a railroad car no you're going to tell me well that's because it has tracks here bolts here that's right it's not uniform unless this is 100 percent uniform it's not uniform and it's never going to be uniform this is never going to be the it's going to have a stress somewhere in here if this goes to fail. It's somewhere in here is a stress created, whether it would be my lines or not. But this interface right here would be a weak point of stresses because I bought my tooling in there to edge it, and they had to do the tooling also. That makes a weak edge right there that wants to break because it's not radius, it's not ramped up. It's a sharper edge. So movement like this, right, so the, let me just use this. So this is the tube. Movement like this down as it compresses, pushes against there. And it fails so much so that it pretzels it. Part folds in here, part folds in there. And we see it in their in the uh, model. 
Now, if it could continue, what we saw in, in True World, it then has a reversal and it blows this ring off. The outer ring is all curly cued out to here, let's say, out to here. But that could have been during the forces. This is in one, the foot loads in one place, but this becomes spiraled. The, the torque is in it, it is spiraled, and the forces are really going out of one location. So it would be added like a location right here, and the spiraling effect gets you that peeling off. Gets you the peeling off, and then you get the curly cue, which we know this creates curly cues. See them? If you use like a lathe idea. Well, maybe part of that carbon fiber acted like a lathe when this, this, this uh, dome spiraled, spun, a torque on it spun and gave you the unwinding of the curly cue out to there. Now, this has a tensile, tensile strength in it. I think it's around 500. I don't know what it is with the thickness of theirs, how they machined it. Do they give it a soft edge here and a tight edge here? makes it easier to shear under under the return reversal forces so this is just a rendering a model and I'm going to step this up you need to take this piece by piece and then as we get there I'll well I sort of explained it already but as we get there we'll, we'll explain more details and resolve questions as we go remember there's a force that had to come here to go out there to blast these bolts off there were bolts here clamped to the head of this clamped to the eyeball these bolts failed all right so it wasn't just going like this as i'm debunking a guy on the, the, the other guy it didn't just go the, all this interface ring and this doesn't just plunge to the back while the back stays while the back doesn't move that's just his finite element program and his um what do i call it uh three month three month three card monty all right it's just three card monty people jumping on on this without without uh Real, real deep thought, and they don't give a shit, frankly. That's my opinion. All right, let me give this one to you. Hopefully you help you understand your interface ring, five inches of carbon fiber, then the outer ring. See the distance? See what you're thinking about here? It's, it's significant. This is, of course, scale to my scale. But it's huge, big significance. The outer ring, I think, is thicker than the inner ring. So I really got to thin this. It's only not by much, but I really got to thin this out even more. Okay. And I don't know if these grooves exist. You know, or did they machine this perfectly smooth, which wouldn't be good. You'd want these valleys created. Let me get some oil in there. That gives you more up and down, more grip on the epoxies. And whatever the epoxy manufacturer says, etc. Keep in mind that he did take this to the cycle. He's not as dumb as he looks. Now, I saw people make fun of him with his only rate of 14% uh, of people that went down. Well, you know what that means to me? That means 86% of the time, he called it off. He said, no, nope, this isn't right. Call it off. So he wasn't just a risk taker. He was a risk averse. He, he handled his risk. And, and, and this time, this, this one, he seemed like it was a go. Or maybe he was corrupted by the billionaires on there to make sure he performed. And it bit him in his ass. But uh, there you go.